On December 16, the White House released Space Policy Directive 6. The document aligns the U.S. strategy for development and use of space nuclear power and propulsion technologies in a safe, secure, and effective manner. Space Nuclear Power and Propulsion Systems, or SNPP systems, include systems and technologies like radioisotope power systems like RTGs and fission reactors, either for independent use or use in nuclear thermal propulsion systems or nuclear electric propulsion systems. As the name implies, these technologies can be used to power spacecraft and landers, as well as act as propulsion systems for upper stages of launch vehicles. Fission reactors, for example, may one day be used to power bases on the Moon or Mars. But before we go any further, maybe we should clarify a few terms. In nuclear fission, the nucleus of an atom splits into two smaller and lighter nuclei. Fission releases large amounts of energy. Fission can be spontaneous or induced. In the case of nuclear thermal rockets, Fission reactors are used to heat a working fluid or propellant such as liquid hydrogen. The hydrogen gas is then expanded through the nozzle at high speeds. In the case of nuclear electric rockets, the thermal energy produced by onboard nuclear reactors, again fission reactors, is converted to electrical energy. The electrical energy is then used to accelerate the thrusting fluid. In RTGs, which many space enthusiasts might be more familiar with, Heat from the natural decay of plutonium-238 is converted to electrical energy. The generator contains a specially produced form of plutonium dioxide. The natural decay of this radioisotope gives off heat, which these thermocouples can turn into electricity. Nuclear rockets are an important consideration for deep space exploration. The propellants are frequently lighter than those used in chemical rockets and provide a higher specific impulse than chemical rockets. ISP is a measure of efficiency. At the sixth meeting of the National Space Council held in 2019, NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine called nuclear thermal propulsion a game changer for what NASA is trying to achieve. Actually using nuclear fission for propulsion. That is absolutely a game changer for what NASA is trying to achieve. Propulsion hasn't changed. You've got a mass and you need to accelerate it. And when we use nuclear fission, you can heat hydrogen to levels that make it exceptionally fast, um, and so that mass is accelerated faster than we could otherwise accelerate it. Um, that gives us opportunity to really protect life uh, when we talk about the radiation dose when we travel between Earth and Mars. Of course, there are also a number of obvious problems and challenges associated with nuclear. With Space Policy Directive 6, NASA has outlined a roadmap for the development of these technologies. By the mid-2020s, for example, NASA aims to develop uranium processing capabilities to support the production of fuel for NTP systems, NEP systems, and in-space and planetary surface power systems and applications. By the late 2020s, the agency plans to demonstrate a fission power system on the lunar surface. By the late 2030s, NASA aims to develop radioisotope power systems that, according to the document, provide higher specific energy and longer operational lifetime than existing RPS capabilities. NASA's experience in terms of space nuclear power and propulsion. NASA already has extensive experience in terms of testing space nuclear power and propulsion systems, and work on NTRs has been going on since the 1950s and 1960s. In 1961, NASA and the Atomic Energy Commission initiated a ground test program known as NERVA, or the Nuclear Engine for Rocket Vehicle Application Program, with the aim of establishing a technology base for nuclear rocket engine systems to be utilized in the design and development of propulsion systems for space mission applications. The project was managed by what was then the SNPO, the Space Nuclear Propulsion Office. NERVA built on the successes of the initial days of Project Rover. Project Rover was initiated in 1955 by the AEC and was developed at Los Alamos Scientific Lab. The tests were conducted at the Nevada test site. Project Rover was transferred to NASA in 1958. The programs ended in 1973. Overall, over a dozen reactors were developed. At present, NASA is currently working with the DOE on a fission nuclear power system project known as Kilopower. More specifically, through Kilopower, NASA and DOE are working on concept studies and initial technologies that will support a long-term presence on the lunar surface and on Mars. 
In late 2017 through early 2018, NASA and DOE successfully demonstrated the kilopower system in a test known as kilopower reactor using Stirling technology, or Krusty. Krusty can generate electrical power in the range of 1 to 10 kilowatts. According to NASA, this is enough to power a small home continuously for 10 years. In a 2018 statement, lead kilopower engineer Mark Gibson stated that Kilopower gives us the ability to do much higher power missions and to explore the shadowed craters of the moon. When we start sending astronauts for long-term stays on the moon and to other planets, that's going to require a new class of power that we've never needed before. For context, the lunar night is equivalent to about 14 Earth days. Next steps for Kilopower include technology demonstrations in flight or technology demonstrations on the lunar surface. Space nuclear power and propulsion systems have tremendous potential for deep space exploration and establishing a base on the Moon or Mars. It should be quite intriguing to follow NASA as the technology develops through the 2020s and 2030s. It's really just about um, getting huge numbers of uh, solar panels out there. And I think assuming the public is receptive, we, you know, there might be nuclear. I think certainly if you build nuclear on Mars as to whether you transport nuclear to Mars would be you know, kind of up, up to the public to decide.